Hello and welcome to Chess with Simon. I'm Simon. Um, today is a great day. Today there are so many exciting things going on and I'm going to start with one very exciting thing. I have been challenged by Hood Coach um, 2470 at Hood. I mean it's got casual two days Hood accept. I'm black. Wow, thank you, Horde Coach, for challenging me. That's awesome. Um, I think you're going to win. But it's going to be a lot of fun, and I think Black always wins, and so I am look forward to finding out that's not true. Also, what sort of I've been reflecting on is, you know this game I lost against Ian? Well, here's my thinking about this game. There's really four ways you can react to a loss like this. The first is to give up chess, and trust me, I've thought about it on many many occasions the second is to give up the Sicilian defense but it's kind of been with me for a long time now and the third way is to give up playing really really sharp openings without doing the analysis like if you're gonna play a really sharp opening you've got it you can't just open the board and like do what looks good and I suppose the fourth reaction is to learn a bit of theory for the Smith Mora the fifth reaction actually I'll tell you what this is a practical try for people who don't feel comfortable in the smith Murray knight f6 on move two with a transposition into the c3 sicilian oh yeah moral players don't like it i mean there are some who would say that c3 is a more solid tr is a more accurate valid opening than the mora discuss so they would say that that's a bad idea you'll probably play um you can probably play d5 here as well, right? As well as knight f3. Similar idea? Similar idea. Okay. So, there's different ways to react to a loss like this. Another is to sort of learn where did it go all go wrong? I think probably on, on the next time I'll take on f3. I mean, I'm sure Ian's not listening to this. I don't know. Bishop h5 didn't look like a bad move. I can't believe that's not... Apparently, the really bad one is this knight d7 move. You've got to play e6 there. This person who played it in 2008, May 2008, apparently e6 is a better move. What's the engine say? e6? e6, or take queen takes d1. Right then, we'll do that next time because I don't like to make a habit of losing. In fact, I don't like to lose at all, but unfortunately, it's one of those things that happens when you play chess. So let's have a look at all of these games then. Okay, so my game versus Tom Shepard. So when I played e5, Tom auto move takes, I take, he auto move there. I'm taking this on unless I'm missing something. Am I just taking this and claiming that I've equalised against Tom's rather original way of avoiding the Grunfeld? Okay, I think I am, but I don't want to play it right now because I'm. this is my sort of idea of being disciplined. Here... I actually don't know what to do here. I think I'm happy with a draw here, aren't I? So should we just move the king up? Because of course, oh no, I think we've got to take the... Uh, I don't know what to do here. That's the Tom game. This one... So we were... The last move was here. And I played h3 to stop g4. And black started to bring the rook down ominously. But surely... Black has to play h5 to force g4. So I think you've got to move that bishop. I mean, I don't want to help my opponents, but haven't you got to move that dark square bishop? But maybe the, maybe the dark square bishop's going to f8. Well, I've got to stir up, some, stir up some trouble before that happens, don't I? Because maybe on the... I, I don't want to give away too much. Mm. I've got some ideas for how to stir up trouble. He says, not giving away too much. That does look a bit scary, that attack. Okay, my basic idea is the A2 diagonal looks weak, and if I could possibly get a bishop on there, we're in heaven. I could even swap the queens off that way, right? But not at the cost of a pawn, because then you go into a worse end game. I don't want that. But I wouldn't mind getting the queens off, because I think in the end games we're better. Um, here, so what happened here was, queen takes pawn... I'm taking here. Would anybody like to guess Black's move, Black's next move? Please feel free to write it in the comments. Actually, you know what? I can't do that because that means I'm cheating. I think uh, that Queen F1 wins here. 
Queen f1, bishop takes, rook takes, isn't it? Is it that simple? I mean, it's easy to miss these things. But I think... Um, okay, let's not be silly about this. I think that wins. What fun, eh? That's cheered me up after getting mullered by Ian. Um, okay. But, you know, it's good to learn, right? Okay. What about this? Um, oh, I think I just... I think I just took back. It was just black took, I took. And then there's an attempt to pin my bishop. Can't I just take this? I suppose takes, I can't pin here. Okay. Maybe king here. I'll need a bit of thought. That will need a bit of thought. This one. Oh, we've had a move. Just right on time. That's awesome. What's that doing? It's kind of it's taking away B4, isn't it, from the knight? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, any any historic games here? None. What do you think, party people? Um I have to come back to that one, I think. I don't know what to do at the moment on that. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to my profile. The game against Gary Sidewinder. Okay, so this is what happened. Took the knight, bishop takes, queen moves. I think here we're not losing <laughs> any more material. I mean, we're going to lose an exchange. But I think after a move like this, we've got this. Which I don't think, you know... Got to be a bit careful, haven't we? But I don't think that's losing material. So I think we've just got a really complicated mixed material ending. Which I'm looking forward to. So the position is this. I just made... Move my queen out of the way of that bishop attack. That's what I just did. Okay. Let's see what else we got. I'm sorry if I forget anyone's game. I don't think I will, but it's a bit chaotic sometimes. This one. Oh, I played d3. Just removing that weakness... It's quite solid and cagey, this. It all came from an Eng English opening, didn't it? Very typical of these sort of double English. So I got a bit of space on the Queen's side. H5 to stop my King's side attack, and then I've played D3 there. See what happens there. This one, we've seen... Liam. Liam played a really good move here. The move I expected, actually. Knight d5. Looking to take on e7. And I did look at e6 here, but it's so messy. Because I think after e6, White's going to play f6. Take the knight, take the bishop. I don't really want to lose the dark square bishop, so I just pulled my rook across, across and just let that pawn go. And then at some point I'll play... Um, Rook e5. Rook e5. Um, yeah, that's the idea. That's the idea. Sorry, knight e5. Sorry, knight e5. Been a long day. You know, that e5 square is free row, so we're going to drop the knight in there. This we've looked at. <gasps> the game with Mark. So in a previous video, I talked about Nigel Short saying, in these situations, you've got to take with the F-pawn, not the H-pawn. And funnily enough, here, I mean, the first thing, it, yeah, if you take with the H-pawn, rook takes here is a bit of a crisis, because it's mate next move. As far as I can see, it's mate next move. But if we take with the magic F-pawn, rook takes here, we can get our rook out of the way. Queen takes. We're escaping. He says, partly convincing himself, but not being entirely sure of that. 
So, um, yeah, I, I think we're hanging on, but you know, it's scary. It's genuinely scary. Um, okay, this, this, not Maxime. Not Maxime has played b5. So they usually play knight d5 here. It's very standard. And it is worth just looking at this because this is really standard theory. So what they play is they play knight d5. I think you take the bishop. They take with the queen. I mean, this is just for instance. Castle. They take on c3. You take with the rook. This is really well known stuff. e5, man. Nah, not always e5 though. b6. Well, I suppose e5 looks like the really common move, doesn't it? Queen c2. I always thought they played bishop b3 there. That's what, isn't that what Karpov's move was bishop b3? I don't know. That's my memory. But um, anyway, none of that happened because knight d5 didn't happen. What happened was b5. Whoa, and then you play bishop d3 according to the database. And then I think at least it got control over the e4 square. For instance, if push, look though. It's only a draw in the one case it happened. I'm sure my opponent won't do that. Stuart, oh, it's up to you really, isn't it? Look what they, look what's just appeared. Okay, now is probably the moment to announce that I have been challenged by Horde Coach. I've accepted the challenge and A5 is the first move. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play that because, come on, we all know about Horde. How hard can it be? Okay, so the thing is, I love Ford. <laughs> you think I'm going to lose in that game? I think I'm going to lose. That's what I think. Sometimes it's fun to play a thing where it's fine to lose. Because I don't know anything about Horde, really. It's just, I mean, I know how pawns move, but I've got very little experience. It's like these things like three check and all that. I think that's it. So I really appreciate the challenge from Horde Coach. I did not... Um, I did not like ask for it. It's so lovely it came out of the blue. I think it might have come from because this other chap who's very good at Horde who challenged me. And I love it when that happens. Community, right? So I'm a bit cheered up because I'm feeling less bad about getting mullered in my first game against Ian. And I've got a good feeling about one of these games which might just make up a little bit. Which game have I got a good feeling about? You know, the one where I'm sacking my queen. This one. I mean, bishop takes, rook takes, right? I think that's right. Unless I'm really more tired than I thought I was. Um, I hope you're all well. I'm not I'm gonna, I'm not going to leave that on the screen at the end. It's not nice. I'm going to leave this on the screen at the end. This is me. I hope you're all well and enjoying your chess, and I'll see you soon.